My name is Caroline Wabara. I'm a SEO specialist and a digital marketing consultant for small businesses in Nigeria. And today I'll be discussing, um, I'll be showing you simple tactics I used in helping uh, clients to rank his website, his e-commerce website, a brand new website on the first page of Google or WordPress, using WordPress and uh, WooCommerce. So let me jump because I don't have much time. But why use, why SEO? The need for SEO is because today's online user is an informed buyer. So before they even come to you to buy your stuff or to do business with you, they've already done their background checks on you, they've checked you, they've checked out your site, they've also reviewed other people's sites on Google before deciding, okay, maybe you're trustworthy enough for me to buy from you. Also, there are two types of audience online on Google, using Google currently. The first one is the information seeker, while the other one is the buyer. Now, these two people have different mindsets when using Google. The information seeker knows he has a pain that he needs to solve, and he's looking for a process to solve it, meaning that he's not ready to buy yet, but he just needs to find an information. Maybe he wants to learn how to do stuff. So the kind of uh, keywords they use on Google is usually what, where, they use question words, what, where, how, and uh, why. Now, for instance, I want to start importing goods into Nigeria. Uh, what are the list of fast selling goods that I can import into Nigeria? Okay, now let me ask Google. So he types in the keyword fast selling, either list of fast selling goods to import or fast selling products in Nigeria. Google shows him the relevant uh, websites and he clicks on it to read the article. He's not ready to buy, he just wants to get more information before taking, uh, making the next uh, decision. Now, how do you make this information seeker to trust your website, come to you, read your article, and then go to the next stage, either to do business with you? What I usually do is find topics that they love to read and I use sites like Nairaland. Nairaland is a, a very popular forum where Nigerians go, someone called it uh, Nigeria's beer parlor, where people go to discuss stuff, some go there to abuse each other, but people call, go there to ask questions. How can I do this? Where can I buy this? Where can I learn this? What can I, so on any topic at all. So they go there to ask questions. So this is the, uh, this is the search phrase I usually use when I want to filter out questions from Naira land, okay? To find out topics or questions people are asking. It doesn't matter how long ago they asked the question. It doesn't matter whether they asked the question five, 10 years ago. So long as it's still ranking on Google, that question, people are still looking for answers to such questions. So now here's an example. Site colon nairaland.com space, okay? Um, <coughs> quote, how do I and import, okay? Now, I'll put, put it in the search box and Google will filter out all the questions people are asking about how do I import goods within the comfort of my home? How do I start uh, import of goods from China and all that stuff? So I'll click on the question and then look at what this, uh, study the conversation. So if, uh, if there is no answer to uh, that question, I'll go back to my client and say, hey, people are asking, want to know how to import goods from the comfort of their home. How do we do that? The client will tell me the steps and I'll go and write an article on it and publish it on his blog. Then I'll still come back to that thread on Naira Land and then act like a third party and say, uh, you can read more information on how to import your goods on this site and people start clicking from Nairaland to his website. This is a sample of a client's website where most of the articles on the site, I got the questions from Nairaland. 
50 hot selling goods. People ask, what are the hot selling products to export? What are the hot selling products to import? 10 things you can import it to Nigeria. So I, I, these are questions I got from Naira Land and published on the site and he started ranking on Google. Now, how do you make, like I said, make sure that your blog or your website answers the information seekers frequently asked questions? Write things like how to articles related to your niche, what, where, how, why, some same things like how much does it cost to build a website? That's a topic that you can discuss. These are questions people usually ask what, where, why. Then you can also do video series on your YouTube channel and then you can publish it on your blog. You can do case studies as well for depending on your industry. Maybe your the client, uh, people need to see uh, examples of clients if helped in the past. You can write case studies, reviews on your blog and you can start ranking. Now, the next person is the buyer. This person understands they have a pain, it keeps them up at night and they need to solve the problem and they are ready to make payments for that to solve that problem. And the kind of keywords they use on Google is usually price, they type things like price, buy, best, location. So they can say things like interior design schools near me or interior design schools in Lagos or uh, price of uh, water closet. So these are the kind of questions because they already, they are ready to make payments. And this is the uh, type of keywords that most businesses or e-commerce sites like targeting. So the, this buyer's mindset is usually, I want to become an interior designer, for instance. Where can I learn interior design online? How much will it cost? How do I register? So your, this is the search phrase, the person types it to Google. Where can I learn interior design? And you make sure that your website answers these buyer's questions. From the brand name to the location to pricing, time, reviews. Make sure you have all these elements on your site. Reviews, testimonials, features. Because it's one thing to bring people to rank on Google and then start driving people to your site. It's also another thing to now convert them into customers for them to now trust you because if they visit your site and they don't see what they need they will just leave immediately and that's what we call a uh, bounce rate so they leave immediately and google will start having this feeling that maybe your site is not that uh, relevant and your ranking drops so make sure you have all this on your site all these questions are answered on your site so they can now take action and also make it easy for them to contact you Put a live chat button on your site, uh, your phone number on your site. I don't advise putting your email, instead replace it with a, a contact form so that you can mine more data from your uh, website visitors such as your name, email address, phone number, and maybe their company name depends if you want that on their location. Now, how do you make your website easy for Google? and your audience to trust you and find you and then help you rank on Google. Here is my client's uh, story, uh, Baron Bertrams. This man uh, came to attended my training earlier last year in March and he, he lamented that his website that he built over two years ago, no customers coming from me, nobody calls him, rather his sales team keep going from door to door to sell or do cold calling and all that. So. He didn't know what to do. So I had looked at his website and I said there are a lot of things wrong with the website, which I'll go through. So this was the, my strategy checklist. I have the tools, I select my SEO tools, which I will discuss. Know your target audience. I asked him a series of questions to understand who his ideal target audience are. Did keyword research, re reviewed his competitors and then did an audit of his website, uh, created a strategy, a roadmap on how to help him to start ranking on Google, optimized the website, created a content strategy that he will follow, build backlinks to his website, and then monitor the progress. So the first step, these are the tools that I use that you can start with. The simplest form is using the Google Auto Suggest on Google. Okay, just type in the keyword. 
of the maybe the industry or your niche. Type it in, Google will show you relevant uh, other searches that people are searching for. You can click on any of them. Another one for WordPress, Yoast SEO plugin is what I recommend for your for optimizing your website. Then another tool I use is called the Screaming Frog SEO Spider. It crawls your website to see what is wrong with your website, whether you have backlinks, um, broken links, duplicate content on your website, uh, whether your images are well optimized, your head title tag and all that are well optimized. Then we have the Excel should be your best friend. That's a, an SEO specialist number one to excel for planning your your seo then next is a google keyword planner you can use that but in place of that use google also auto suggest to find keywords people are searching for then google search console very important you need to you need it set up create your site map and um, submit it on google search console so that it will help google to start tracking your website indexing your website on google search and then showing you the keywords people used to find you online and they click through it then the next is bosumo i use this tool a lot to find uh, to do competitive analysis to see what my competitors content they are sharing online and what people where their target audience usually hang out online what which of their content has the most shares on social media so i use bossumo to find such content and then hubspot blog topic generator you can use that to for your blogging it creates your thinking oh, what kind of topic should i write about headline for your blog post i use that to generate headlines all you just need to do is put in your uh, subject or keyword then next, know your ideal customer. Who is your ideal customer? It's very important for Google search for SEO so that you don't attract the wrong customers to your website. Okay, you need to know because, for instance, um, maybe you and Conga are in the same niche. You sell like my client and Conga. When I looked at his website, I noticed that Conga we are ranking for those keywords but he said conga's customers are not his ideal customers his own ideal customers are architects uh, building construction companies that he's not looking for all these um, uh, individuals to come and buy his uh, bathroom accessories so he's looking for architects and builders so you need to know who they are and you start by asking questions answering such questions like what product or services do you offer? These are the questions I usually ask them. What product or service do you offer? Who is your ideal customer and why would they need your offer? So they answer, they give me in-depth answer on why their customers need their products. What keywords will they use to find your product or service on Google? And then who are your competitors? I need to know before. So they told me that their competitors were uh, you bag no but and beyond bedroom and beyond and the fracking so those were his competitors and from what he answered i was not able to know his ideal customer persona and i did it this way femi is a building contractor he wants to furnish his clients office building with the modern water closet and he doesn't want to go to the market to buy he would rather stay in his office and check what he needs online and then ask them to bring the to come and do a demonstration in the office or show the samples of what he has at his, they have at his office so he goes online to search for such information now he can type in things like wc toilet price in nigeria and google will show him the relevant uh, websites ranking for such keywords by their brand name location pricing reviews and features now he clicks to visit the website or landing page to learn more and then make inquiry now unlike his competitors such as conga he, he preferred not to put the price on his site because 
he said his target audience are not the ones that are looking to buy uh, retail, they want wholesale. So he would rather they fill the form and contact him for quotation and then he will send the bulk or deliver it to their location. So this, they now visit the website and, and make inquiry. Now you can study his buying behavior. First, he starts by browsing, either by name, keyword, location, and price. Next, he starts comparing by looking at reviews, checking out other people's sites, and comparing it with his own. Okay, checking out Naira Land, for instance, if he visits the site and he doesn't trust what he sees, he can go to Naira Land to ask questions. What do you guys think about this brand? Or what do you, do you think I should go ahead and buy from them? Should I trust them? He can also look at Google and see the reviews people are saying about them on Google before he makes purchase. Like I said, today's online user is an informed buyer. Next, he confirms the ease. He can now start making inquiries. Are your products good? Uh, what, how much does it cost? Should I make payment now or later? Then next, he can now either book consultation or make payments. So you can see the hierarchy starts with browsing, compare, confirm, and then book. So that's how your website should, your SEO strategy should be. So make sure that your website answers this person's questions. Make sure you have your brand name there, location, pricing, time, uh, testimonials, features, and then accessibility, like your live chat button, your phone number, and your contact. Now, who are your enemies or who are your competitors? How I do this, I type in his keyword in Google to see who is ranking for those keywords, the top five or top 10. Then I check out their website to see what they are doing, what is making them to be successful. Next, I use a tool called uh, SEMrush. It's, uh, uh, someone said SEMrush is your, it uh, lets you know whether you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. So it helps you to know what your competitors are doing, what their strategy is, shows you how they are ranking on Google, who their other competitors are, and um, who is linking to them, okay, what content are they sharing, and who is talking about them, okay? And are they also running adverts? You can see the adverts they are running if they run ads. So this is the tool I use, SEMrush, to check the, their strategy, and this is the sample. So I used it to check their competitor, Frakem. I saw how they were ranking on Google, Okay, checked out the backlinks, people who link into them to see, okay, should I go to and meet, if it's their blogs, should I go and meet those blogs or the, those bloggers and ask them to also write about my clients? I make such decisions using these two, SEMrush. Okay, and then I also visit the, the competitor sites and see, do they have a blog? Okay, what content are they sharing on their blog? So I can also do same and start sharing content on my own blog as well. Then I use this, like I said before, the auto suggest, Google auto suggest, scroll down to the bottom. Once you type in the keyword, scroll down to the bottom of your search result. Google will show you related searches for that keyword you're looking for. Like this searches relating to bathroom fit fittings in Nigeria. Now, audit your website. Here is a simple format I use to see if their website is being indexed on Google. I'll just type in site colon your website name.com or dot ng, depending on the domain you're using. I'll type it into Google and Google will show me all the pages on your website. Now in some cases where the pages can't show, it could be that your web designer, why design, in process of designing your website, he blocked uh, the spiders from um, crawling your website in the robots.txt file. So he put a slash instead of just blocking maybe the, the login to your dashboard. He blocked the whole site. I've seen such cases for a client of mine. He blocked the whole site from being assessed by Google. And Google will tell you instantly that, sorry, we can't assess your website. 
And you also need to submit other questions you need to ask. Have you submitted your site map in Google? So uh, Yoast SEO helps create, automatically generate a site map for you called um, sitemap.xml. So your website name.com slash sitemap.xml. So you can uh, submit it in your Google search console. Very important, you create a Google search console. So you go to google.com forward slash webmasters to create and submit your sitemap. Then is your website optimized? You can see from the, the title tag has to be, you have your keyword. So this is the format I usually use for your title tag. Brand name plus industry, name, industry keyword plus location. So whether your brand name is uh, say GT Bank, your industry keyword could be either online banking, then your location, either Lagos or Nigeria or Lekki, depending on where the location you're targeting. Make sure you have it in your title tag and in your meta description as seen on the screen, the meta description. Now, also have that same keyword in your body, the body of your, your, your page. And also check out for things like duplicate content. This is the tool I use. This is how Screaming Frog does it. It, it crawls your website the way um, Google will crawl your website. So you have to install it on your website, on your laptop or your desktop. Say um, it, it doesn't work online. You have to download it on your, like the software on your laptop to use it. So, and it's free for the first 500 uh, URLs that you crawl on your site. So, okay, so you can see all that. It shows you the page title, whether it's empty. If it's empty, it shows you the, the pages that are empty, uh, the meta description. If you have 404, 404 means the page doesn't, doesn't exist. So you need to redirect them to the new page. Okay, do a 301 redirect. Now, Other questions you need to ask when auditing your website. Is it mobile or responsive? You can do that directly for your browser by minimizing your browser and pushing it to the left-hand side. If, it's, if the, your website falls into a single line, that means it's mobile responsive. If it if requires the person shifting, you know, scrolling left and right, it's not mobile responsive. Can your website be still understand what your offer is? There's this tool I use to check that. It's a Chrome extension called Landing Page Checklist. Landing Page Checklist. You can use it to find out if your website is conversion friendly, it can, if it can convert your website visitors into leads. So Landing Page Checklist is the Chrome extension you need to install on your Chrome browser. Now, is your website trustworthy? You need to have SSL certificates. This uh, HTTPS. Google has given uh, a rule that by July it is to start labeling sites that don't have that uh, HTTPS not secure. So when people see it, they will see the warning sign that this site is not secure and it can make people leave your website uh, immediately. So you need to change it, ask your web hosting company to have it installed on your cPanel. Now, can people take action? These are the questions that landing page checklist will help you to find out. Is your website readable and informative? The Yoast SEO plugin can show you. Are you visible on Google? Start by typing your keyword on Google to check. So I, these are the things I found out on my client side. They weren't visible on Google. The questions that they weren't visible on Google, even though they, were, they had their Google map, they weren't ranking for their keyword with that Google map. And um, they were also not active on social media. And then who is talking about you? These are the questions you need to ask to find out all these, the answers to them. Then have you installed Google Analytics? They didn't have Google Analytics installed on their website. So that means there, there was no way for them to find out how people are visiting our website, where are they coming from, what keywords they use to visit their sites, what uh, devices did they use. Now, have you submitted your site map? Or these are the questions you need to ask. Okay, what actions did they take on your website? Google Analytics should will show you all of that and the keywords they use to find your website. Now, next, 
I created their SEO strategy, starting with their goal. I asked them, what are your goals? They said they want to get, generate leads, sales qualified leads from their this uh, SEO that will do for them. So they wanted to generate leads. They wanted their website to be the source for all things, bedroom, accessories, and all that. They also wanted to increase websites from search engine. They also wanted to increase leads, like I said. So the KPIs was number of website traffic from different sources, and then number of leads to their website generated from Google. Now, the tactics, I showed them the roadmap of things I will have to do. I'll have to define their target audience, audit their website, uh, perform long tail keyword research, uh, create content team for writing articles that are related to their uh, business, then optimize the website, get backlinks, and then track where their leads are coming from, whether they're coming from search engine or from social media, or from their email marketing campaign and the others. Then these are the reports that I'll be giving them every month at the end of the month. Total number of keywords, okay, number of uh, website visits, number of lead form fields, and then attribute the traffic and leads to their various sources, whether they're coming from social media or from search engine or and others. So this is the strategy I created for them. Next, I went on to start optimizing their website. This is step by step. Make sure that the keyword I used, I found from Google, I used it to optimize their URL. You can see they place your keyword here. The page title shouldn't exceed 60 characters. Meta description should exceed 160. I also have to put those keywords in those places, even their header one, header two, and um, the body of their content. Then also in their image, I had to compress their image because this was so heavy. Google complained that their site, images on their site were heavy and the, 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 the keywords we are missing in the, the web design, the former web designer just uploaded the images without renaming them with the ideal keywords of their products. So I did all of that then link the website to their the pages they are the linked the pages to other relevant pages on their website so this is the tool i use the excel you can, either you can use google sheets or your microsoft excel so i divided this way the product or the page followed by the url so i'll have to rename the url followed by the meta description, I'll write it, uh, the format, and then meta description, you can see the numbers, it's for me to, it helps me to count how, if I'm exceeding the 160 characters. So I did all this in Excel for all their important category pages and their landing pages. And the meta keyword, the header one, header two, and then the categories. So everything has to be done Quite fast, uh, the guru said SEO is like accounting. If you miss one, make one little mistake, if messed up the whole thing. So everything has to be done perfectly before you can now transfer it to their website. So this, I use the, the Google Sheet to do all that. Then after that, I can now go to the website, make sure Google Yoast is installed, and start adding the things I did on the uh, Google Sheets, I can start putting them in the Yoast. So this is the Yoast SEO with this as a guide, this analysis as a guide to help you know if there are some things I omitted. So if, if it's good, it shows good results. If there's still more improvement or problems, it shows me here. So I add all that in the SEO title tag, the meta description and the focus keyword. Because I know that I'm writing for human beings, not just for Google search engines. So it's very important that you also write for human beings and also for Google. So this is the way I did it. I'll ask the client for the details of the product. What's the name of your product? He says, basic mixer. What is it all about? He tells me the, their technical terms, cartridge, this and that. Then I ask about the benefits of this. I try to answer the benefits of this basic mixer because I'm writing for human beings. So I write the the lifestyle and all that stuff, then I'll make the customer a part of the product. So this is the template I use for 
that. Then next, at the, the product description, this is it here, on this side of the page. This was where I write everything following the Google uh, guidelines, SEO guidelines. Then the SEO title tag, I put all that in here, the long tail keyword. So this is the one I've already searched on Google. What people are currently searching for, the keywords they look, I put them in the meta description, in the SEO title tag, and in the product, in the, in the product description. Once I'm done with it, and then the focus keyword, I can now go and add it to their, each of the pages. Now, creating the content strategy. Like I said before, find out topics your content, your audience love to read. I gave example of uh, using Naira land. So, like I said, your audience have different mindsets. Some will come to your site, they are not ready to buy now, or they just want to check around, read your content, see if you are for real, or even engage with you, or sign up for your newsletter. So make sure that your content answers them at their, the different stage of their buying, this, um, their journey, the buyer's journey on your website. So, the awareness stage is for those who are not ready to buy yet. They just want information. So there are types that usually type in things like 10 ways to do stuff, 10 best uh, things to buy. They watch videos. They check, they have, they're looking for checklists of things they need to do to solve their problem at that point. So I create content for those people, those information seekers. Then for those who are now ready to go to the next stage, the consideration stage, I type in things like this versus that. what how I get to know this is by looking at the clients Google the Google Analytics the questions they ask I also check out uh, uh, questions asked on Naira land and even on social media groups as well like Facebook group or WhatsApp groups I see the questions they ask there I can filter out the questions in Facebook group by asking typing things like um, um, challenges. People will say, I have a challenge. I have this. How can I do this? I type in that and then I'll see the questions. So I use this format, this versus that. So for instance, um, let's say you're selling land, you're a real estate, you're a realtor and you want to sell land. So land with CFO versus land without CFO, which should you buy or which should you go for? This is how it's done. So land with CFO versus land without CFO, we should do by case studies. How uh, customer A became a millionaire with real estate investments. That's examples of case studies. Uh, reviews, testimonials from clients, client interviews. I see some companies abroad do that. They will just interview their clients on video and they tell them how the, the, the challenges they had at the beginning and how they moved, they contacted the company to solve the problem for them and how the, <coughs> the result of uh, what they got at the end. So these client interviews and then challenge. So you can ask them, join our seven day challenge and learn how to uh, rebrand your business. So challenge, these are the kind of blog posts that you can write. It can even be a lead magnet. So you can tell them, sign up to get any of this, to download this. So they sign up to your newsletter and then you can start uh, following up with them in band. So SEO is like the top of the funnel. It's like you're the top of your marketing funnel to just drag, attract people who don't know you yet to come to you. Then you can use this to, as your lead magnet to get them to enter your funnel. Then you can start following up with them with your email marketing. So don't expect that SEO might give you all the sales you need. Some will be ready to buy at that point. Others are still checking. So have another strategy, backup strategy to get them to convert into leads. There's the for the consideration stage. Then the decision stage, when the person is now ready to buy, you see them, they type in stuff like price of this, price of that. Make sure you have things like how it works on your site so they can see how what they are going to buy, how will it, uh, what will be the result for them at the end of the day. So how it works is very important, depending on your company. Then frequently asked questions. What are those questions that people, customers usually ask you every time, constantly, repeatedly, what are they? List them out, put the answers and put it on your site. You can put it on your pricing page. 
okay for those who are not checking out your price and then they scroll down they see the questions and answers because they want to see what will life be like after i've invested in this your product or service will my life be better will i get what i'm looking for that's the frequent that's the job of the frequently asked questions and then so calculator could be for people in um, maybe the loan or insurance company they can use to check how much it will take for them to achieve the results so you can use any of this format for your decision for the decision makers now like i said before find topics they love to read i use google and naira land to find topics people love to read and then use ask the client now write about this and i'll go back to, after writing, i'll go back to that same thread and then put the link on the thread to drive traffic listen to the conversation and then go write your article then this is my format for writing my blog post so everything in uh, what they could have said purpose before content so what's the purpose of your blog before you start writing what's the goal of your blog post so you put it there purpose either to entertain them or to educate them or to persuade them or to convert them or to retain what is the purpose then the blog post type is it a, um, a case study or is it a list post or a, um, so what are they then the medium is it uh, going to be text format is it going to be video format is it going to be infographic is it going to be audio you can put that there then your post title using with the help of um, this tool like i mentioned hubspot blog topic generator i can get the topic that people will be interested in reading because the headline sells your content we convince people to either read your article or not then i can now start with the introduction i usually start my introduction with questions oh uh, before now you thought uh, buying accessories or choosing bedroom accessories was a problem well now it's no longer a problem you are about to learn the the essential bathroom accessories you need for your home keep reading then i'll start writing list posts list posts format then the conclusion either ask them to drop a comment and then at the end of the blog i always end my blog post with a call to action getting them to the uh, decisions either to either sign up for my newsletter or buy my product or service always have a call to action or a lead magnet to take them to the next stage because people after reading your content they don't know what to do next they'll just leave your disappear from your website you want them to stick to your website or give you something in return either their email address or their or to buy from you so tell them what to do next your call to action will tell them what to do next then your meta description for seo i write all that there and then the long tail keyword then next i start building backlinks because it's not just your website is okay. so backlinks on your website very important so after publishing all this content doing the on page seo the next is the getting people attracting people to the website so i do things like forum posting um, blog commenting go to other sites to write comments on their blog social media posting writing articles on other people's sites directory submission google maps vconnect uh, all these other listing sites make sure you have um, list your business on those sites and put the link back to your website and the result of this was that their website this uh, goal started in um, uh, June because of they were trying to reach out to the former web the developer he didn't give them the login details to their we had to now buy build a brand new website for them so we started from June and from July we started seeing results and the um, stuff started increasing now your website has their ranking what next this is where I advise you don't relax because your competitors are also fighting to knock you off the first page 
So make sure you are seen everywhere by your target audience. The same people who found you on Google, they are also on social media, they are also on WhatsApp, they are also on other forums. So make sure you're everywhere. When they open their phone, the first thing they see is you. So be everywhere. Use this uh, Conga and Jumia style that when they visit their site, as soon as you go to Facebook, you see their ads following you all over the place. So invest in, or invest in uh, ad, advertising. Very important. Create more content to encourage you to visit your website and be active on Google, social media, capture leads, and write articles on another blog, and be the Coca-Cola of your industry. Thank you.